everyone and a very warm welcome to this video. Uh, today I'd like to take a bit of time and talk about how you can uh, remove secrets from your Spring Boot applications and use Vault uh, to centralize the, um, the secrets. So here I have a, a MongoDB instance as well as a Spring Boot application. So as you can see here, normally you would use the, um, the secrets inside your uh, Spring Boot application and then send a request to your database, um, in our case MongoDB, um, and establish a connection. Now, um, generally speaking, this might be also like, you know, from uh, the administrative aspect, um, might be not that big of a problem if, only, if you only have a, uh, have a database to deal with. But generally, modern uh, application is to interface with a lot of um, other applications like you know uh, a queuing service or an API and also lots of other um, applications probably um, and having all of these secrets um, inside of your application um, th that makes it really um, um, yeah tough to manage um, and uh, yeah you, you do not know uh, if these secrets are compromised and if they are compromised you do not know um, if someone is actively using them on your infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that is the main challenge that we're trying to address. I mean, I also didn't get into the part that um, uh, you uh, put the secrets inside of the source code, right? So that's also, I think, one of the big, biggest challenges. So um, yeah, so, and that is what really brings us to Vault. Now with Vault, we have a different um, method of approaching this. So for one, we centralize all of our applications inside of a Vault, uh, a central Vault. And after centralizing, then we have our applications um, make requests to the Vault to retrieve those secrets. So, um, so, for uh, so as you can see here, so we have an application, it is um, uh, firstly, um, it is trying to uh, access secrets, but first it needs to authenticate itself, of course. And uh, there are many different authentication methods involved, uh, like uh, app role, um, Kubernetes, um, Azure, etc. Um, and like depending on the platform that you're using, it might make sense to use one or the other. Um, and so yeah, the app authenticates itself um, to Vault uh, using the authentication method that we mentioned, and then Vault returns a token to that application um, and with that token, there's a policy attached and that, uh, that mentions what uh, permissions uh, this application has. Um, so um, this policy is also path, everything involved is path based. Uh, so as you can see here, this is a second, uh, second step when the application is actually trying to retrieve uh, secrets. So, um, and the secret is of course, like the first thing that comes into mind is, you know, key value and uh, stuff like that and just basically um, some really basic stuff like static things but you can also have static uh, SSH keys um, and dynamic credentials um, into Vault um, and the policy piece again is making sure that the application is consuming um, the, um, the secret that is allowed to um, and yeah as I mentioned once the application um, uh, as authenticated, then it can uh, retrieve the secret. So that is exactly um, what we are going to be building today. Um, uh, all right, now th uh, this is what, um, uh, what the, like you know, what the first uh, kind of step towards centralizing the secrets would look like. So the first step is like basically just removing the secrets from the application and putting them putting them into a static key store, uh, a static um, a static key value store into Vault. And have the application basically um, access that, uh, re basically retrieve it at runtime, um, and then make requests to the database. Um, so of course that is one way to do it. This is, um, I think, uh, a fair, uh, pretty much a, a good first step towards securing the application. So as you can see here, this is the workflow. So first, the application authenticates, then retrieves the secret and uses those secrets to access the database. And again, the policy piece makes sure that the application is um, only accessing the thing that it's allowed to. 
However, we can take this one step further with the dynamic uh, credentials into Vault. Um, and there's also, again, a plugin for MongoDB that we are going to be using today. So uh, in that fashion is that the first, uh, the application makes a request to Vault. Hey, Vault, I need to access this secret. And as this uh, request comes in, then Vault goes ahead and creates a, a user into the database and returns it to the, uh, to the uh, application and attaches a time to live to that. And once that time to live is up, then Vault goes ahead and drops that user. Um, and as you can imagine, um, this could really uh, improve your security posture in that um, even if that application uh, is not properly configured and is just logging these credentials into outputs and someone gets access to those outputs, um, they cannot do anything probably uh, with it because this, um, if you, I mean, it, that is the case if you have your time to live properly configured um, and um, yeah they cannot do anything with it because the time to live is up and that the user is not does not really exist in the database anymore all right now I'm going to generate a um, spring boot application uh, using the spring initializer um, they, there are a couple of libraries that they're going to need um, so I mean like first I'm going to use be I'm going to be using maven and like the versions that you're seeing um, um, but yeah, there are a couple of things that we need to add. Uh, Spring Web, this is going to be an MVC application. So, and also TimeLeaf, um, as well as uh, Vault configuration. So, and also MongoDB. Uh, don't choose the reactive one, we are going to be using the normal one. All right, now inside the application, so as you can see, this is the skeleton. I added some stuff here. So uh, the only thing uh, that we need here is um, just uh, to have the vault token. As you can see, I'm setting it as an environment variable um, and also the scheme. Uh, so I'm using HTTP. Uh, you could be, of course, using HTTPS, uh, especially if you're in pr uh, production. So, um, and the, yeah, the token is the, the authentication method that I'm using. Of course, into production, you might be using something like app role. Uh, and as you can see, I also have some um, additional um, just HTTP, uh, sorry, HTML templates for um, for my MVC application um, um, just uh, to generate the views. And as well as like, you know, just a bunch, uh, just one class um, uh, as a DTOS, as well as the, um, the repository, um, all of these like, you know, the Spring Boot. Um, uh, things that are normal in Spring Boot. Also, I have a controller. Um, just when a request comes in, um, I'm going to um, just persist something into the database um, as well as also returning um, all of the, the customers that are in the database. So this is pretty much it. And the only one thing that you need to add here uh, is this bean. Um, is this uh, there are there are there's this one small modification that we need to make to the to the um, to the database portion to so the connection stream so the, and this is the piece that you're seeing uh, currently on the screen that is going to be doing that um, so uh, and I'm I'm reading um, uh, I'm yeah firstly I'm uh, getting a session from Vault um, and uh, authenticating myself basically and then reading um, the um, the um, the secret basically the, the 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 dynamic secret that is going to be under this path which we will see in a short quick moment. So um, now now I'm, I'm I'm first let's let's start a vault server. Um, so the command is basically I think uh, I'm sure you might, you should know it, but this is the command to start a dev server on vault um, uh, for your um, for tests. Um, and then I'm going to um, just, um, yeah, set up a bunch of, uh, just two environment variables uh, to, to further interact with Vault and uh, properly configure it. So these are basically uh, the two things that you would need um, to, to uh, configure Vault. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, to authenticate to the local Vault cluster. Um, and now we are going to, um, yeah, basically enable uh, the proper secret engine. And this is, as you can see here, the, the, the database engine is database and I'm gonna pack, uh, enable it under MongoDB path. Um, and also here I'm configuring it. Um, so uh, the role name is of course, is um, as you can see, all the, the things 
you're seeing as the the plugin name um, so uh, that is the MongoDB database plugin uh, and also I added the, the just the name for the for the role as well as the connection string um, that uh, we're going to have so the username and the password I created the username and uh, into MongoDB with uh, MongoDB admin um, and I'm going to be using that uh, whenever I create a database and this is the creation statement uh, so this is also one important piece so every time this is exactly the command that when the user requests uh, the credentials would be run so this is uh, of course you might not want to have admin role but this is uh, what I'm going to do for, with my test per, for my test purposes um, but yeah this is basically um, the creation statement what happens um, uh, when the user is created as well as the time to live all right um, now let's also let's have a look at this uh, into the UI so you can access the UI of course uh, using the uh, what you're seeing uh, the, the URL above um, and you can test this if this is working properly when you go to the path that you configured and um, yeah just request the credential so yeah, as you can see, I can receive a credential. And also one pretty neat thing here is that you can also um, uh, rotate um, the, the uh, root credentials, as you can see here, so that at that point, um, uh, no one except for Vault knows those root credentials that you configured your um, database engine with. So, uh, All right, let's uh, start this out. So uh, yeah, as you can see here, I'm logging, I'm, uh, I'm outputting, of course you can use a logger, of course, but I'm outputting the user to show you that um, every time that we run the application, um, the user, um, the database user is going to be unique um, for that um, session. So just please uh, note this, uh, the ending uh, for this user and let's run it again. Um, and as you can see, effectively, um, this is an, a new user that is not um, the same user as we had previously. Um, so yeah, basically every time that we run this application, um, the user is going to be um, a new one. Um, so now again, I'm gonna verify it uh, if everything is working. So all right, and also like um, in the future video, we are going to be um, using some of these um, the fields uh, that we have also have uh, have a look at what how database um, how um, yeah encryption as a service works and things like that. All right, um, so yeah, thank you for watching um, and have a good one. All right, so that's it, folks. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good one.